Oh Jesus. Luke 10, 21. Today I'm not preaching, I'm talking. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in his spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden this thing from the wise and the clever, the prudent. We are too wise and clever. You have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them to babies. If he is so, Father, for so it seems good in your sight. Maybe this is too big an English for you, so can I have the NLT in that hour? At that same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And he said, Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things. From those who think themselves wise and clever. And for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, it pleases you to do it this way. What is the devil's motive in our lives? What is the devil's motive? It's simple to take us from fellowship. Or to take us from what the Greek will call colonia. Fellowship. The devil's main mandate is to disconnect man. From anything that is called a source. You can be in an, in an area and everybody has power and you don't have. Because you lack prepaid. You have money in your momo. In the bank, in the house. But you don't have credit. And because you don't have credit, you can't iron. You can't watch TV. You can't charge your phone. But you have money. That money should have been able to do all this for you. But you fail to apply the money at the right time. Many have disconnected from God. And they only look for God when they can apply God at that moment. Because God cannot be applied now. God must be processed. Being close is not being anointed. You can be close to God and yet useless in the sight of God. This is a serious one. You can be very close. We call it proximity. You are very close. And yet irrelevant. So it's like you have the money. But now you have to go to town and go and get prepaid. Or you have to go to town. And maybe the prepaid people have closed. But you need it now. So you know what you do? You go and look for somebody who has power. So you are looking for somebody who is anointed. But God is your friend. But you have failed to apply God. The way you needed God most. Peter was close to Jesus. He was holding him. He was guiding him. Jesus even came to his house to eat. But yet a woman from nowhere premeditated her thoughts and said, if I can touch Jesus, I can be made whole. And yet Peter was close to Jesus and was never made whole. Why is it so? Because many people don't understand this. But let us go to the beginning of God's word. In the garden of Eden, the Bible said there were four rivers. Many know about Tigris and Euphrates. There were four rivers that fed the garden. You can be close to a man, a person, a God who has so many tributaries and yet enjoying one factor and think you have arrived. There were four rivers that God, when he made the garden, four rivers were watering the garden. The fifth one had not yet been made. There was a fifth one, which was not a river. It was called rain. And that one, God was never going to bring it until man had decided to do the obvious, to plow or to pray. There was four major rivers that God was using to feed. So you can be very close to God and you are enjoying fellowship, but you are poor. Because you have not tapped into his riches of glory. And you can also be very close to God and you have tapped into his riches of glory, but you have not tapped into his grace and his mercy. So somebody called him all sufficient one, El Shaddai. The many breasted one. But somebody just called him Jehovah Jireh because he provided. Someone also called him He's my shepherd. This is a God who has so many angles to him. 
Am I talking to somebody here? Am I, am I talking to somebody here? So, if you look at the Garden of Eden, when Satan came, his major motive is to put man out of God's connection to, for man to be disconnected. And those of you who came to church on my train on Friday, I was teaching you that John chapter 10 says that it is the thief that uses the window or jams the fence. When the devil came to the garden, he spoke to Eve, which was illegal. I have daughters today who I had control on. But the day they married, I no longer have control. There are certain things I must ask their husband. Because that is the doorway to them. I have one daughter who is not minding me. She's here. And I've been talking to the husband. The husband is here wearing a cap. The husband is not minding me. If it was those days, I would have beaten that my daughter. And I'll be on social media. When Satan came to the garden, he went straight to Eve. Why do you go to Eve? Because Eve is vulnerable. He didn't go to Adam. He went to Eve. And Eve listened, enjoyed that seed, and gave it to Adam. And I've taught you this, that Eve was bewitched. But Adam was not bewitched. Adam made a decision. Am I talking to somebody here at all? It was a choice. And every choice you make as a human being, God cannot do anything about it. It is your choice. God watched as Eve ate the tree. Adam ate some. And God, when they are finished, God said, Adam. Now, any time you see that God is not talking to you, but he's asking you a question, you should know you have missed it. God, you see, God should not be somebody who should ask you a question. He should be able to be bold enough and tell you, come. If I come and tell you, are you busy? It means that I am not having that rapport. So it's like I need a permission from you. So when God came to the garden, look at the read your Bible. All along, when God came to the garden, he said, Adam, do this. Adam, go here. Adam, get this. Do that. But for now, God came and said, where are you? Now, God, don't you know where I am? Why are you asking me where are you? Because God can see that even though you are close, you are hiding. <laughs> if I expect you. Today, I'm, I'm crazy. Mr. Orlando, you and your wife. When you came to see me years ago, that you wanted to become children of mine. I told them, do A, B, C, and D. One rule I give them, which I'm sure they've not done, is they should give me 10 souls. Let me ask them how many they have brought. 10 souls. If I've asked them to give me money, if I've asked them to do something which is Fetish. Aquantre. He would have done it. But I said, win ten souls. Now, someone said, why ten souls? Let me tell you this. Can I have your attention, everybody? After God gave to Adam, God has stopped giving to man. Listen to this carefully. Man gives to God. God makes Man, he doesn't give. What's the difference? So God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, leave your father, your mother, and come to me, and I will make you, I will make you a great nation. Now, when I want to give you, it is instant. 
But if I have to make you, it's a process. He gave Adam. Adam lost it all. Why? Because anything you are given, if you have not been made to contain it, you will lose it. So Jesus also came and he looked at Peter and he said, follow me and I will make you. Christians of today don't want to be made. They want to be given. If you give me somebody who will take me out of my trouble, some rich man who will come and marry me, Lord, my life will change. You marry the man two days, you are out of the way. Two days. You can get a car today, and three days you lose the car. I see then. If you, if you are not careful, your life will be cut off in addition. God gave Adam and Eve everything they needed in the garden. Everything they wanted. The only thing they had to do was to manage. And I've come to realize this in my short span of life, which is short but longer than most of you here. Because at least I've preached since 1995 fully. I've never stopped preaching. There's never been a day since 1995 I've not preached. So, I think I've preached more than anybody here. And I'll tell you this. That whenever people are giving things, they always lose it. I can give you anointing. You will fall down and you'll get up. But three weeks from today, you will still come for more oil. Because you got oil. But when you generate your own oil... I think I'm not preaching well here. The woman came to Jesus at a well and said to Jesus, Jesus said, can you give me, that's what happens in church, can, you, can I have your cup to fetch water? The lady looked at Jesus from head to toe. Are you my size? Are you my level? We don't flow. You are, you are Jew. I'm Samaritan. You want my cup. If even you touch this cup, I can't use it again. He want my cup to fetch water. He just said, you always been coming here to fetch water, right? I can give you some water. That if I give you this water, you will not have to travel again to this well to fetch water. He said, he that believes in me, out of his belly shall flow a river of living water. And the woman said, I am tired of well. I want river. Many Christians have stayed at Oh, God forgive me. Well, poor you enough. You have stayed at gutter level Christianity. Gutter. Where you catch panla fish or golden fish. You know that kind of stream that passes in front of your house that you put hook in to get fish. That is the river you operate in. And that kind of river, fish doesn't flow through until it rains. How many of you ever did that kind of journey when you were young? You go on the streets looking for fish. And you do some net here, and some bot, a bottle here, you cut here, and the fish enters and you catch it. And say, well, got a, got a fishing. The woman said, I've been coming to a well, and you say, What? You give me what? A river in my belly. The woman now forgot that. You see, she was holding a cup. And she was saying that you were at a cup level of your life. You know what is happening? Don't be too arrogant. Where you have arrived, you have scratched nothing. Don't think because of where you are, you have arrived anywhere at all. Let me tell you, if God should open your eyes, you will go to heaven and you will cry. Because in heaven, you will see the buildings you did not build. You will see the souls you did not win. You will see the mansions you never came across. The assignment you were supposed to do, that you could not do. And whilst everybody is rejoicing, you will be crying. I say, heaven, some will cry. 
cry, not because they are sinners, but because they look at what they were supposed to be that they could not be because they were limited by what they were holding. God can never give you beyond your level of capacity. Hey, woman, you are coming to the well with a cup. You will always come and go and come. But I want to introduce you that there's a river inside you. If this river inside you will always be used, you will not come to this world again. And the woman says, show me that river. Give me that river. There's a difference between healing and health. Healing is health. When you fall sick and you have to go and get healing. Health is you never fall sick. And God never promised that he will heal us. Of course, you read in the Bible that he is the God that healeth. But you see, what he wants us to do, he wants us to walk in health. Behold, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health. If he asks your soul prospers. So when God wants your soul to prosper and be in health, he doesn't pray for you. He feeds your soul because your soul is the seed of poverty and sickness. The seat of poverty and sickness is your soul. And your soul has to do with how you feel. Your five senses. Your emotions, your sight. How you interpret things. Your interpretation of things. I have a daughter. Before she got married, she had irregular menstrual cycle. And every time the doctors would say it's her hormones, I'll pray for her. Three, four months it will come back. I'll pray for her. So she can have sometimes a menses like three times or four times in a month. It will go and it will come. One day I look at her and say, this thing, I don't understand it. But let's keep trusting God. It was when she gave birth and understood why she was having a regular menstrual cycle. Because she got married and she gave birth to triplets. And the doctors didn't really understand because she releases more than an egg in a month. Every woman releases one egg. She releases three eggs in a month. So whilst I was praying, I was binding something that God was preparing in her system. You see, when you don't know God's mind, you will always destroy and fight things that God is even using to build you. Because here is Adam. He knew how to solve every problem. Adam sins and he uses a fig leaf to cover himself. God can say, what have you done? For the first time in your life, you have made a mistake. For the first time since I brought you to this earth, you have taken a step and you yourself you have taken a wrong solution to solve your problem. Why will you cut tree, a fig tree leaves and cover your nakedness? There is something you don't know. Nakedness is covered not by fig leaves, but it's covered by glory. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Adam, what you are short of is you have run short of glory, not short of fig leaves. Applying the wrong key for the wrong method and getting the wrong result. And God looked at Adam and said, listen, why have you sown fig leaves? And God said, let me show you the solution. Why did Adam have the solution again? Sin makes you forget your assignment. Sin will reduce your glory. Every glory has a weight. Kabod, the weight of the glory. Glory has a weight. Glory does what has a weight. How many of you check your weight? If you check your weight, you will know that your, the dress you wear affects the weight. Your real weight can be determined after you have put the weight with and you've removed your dress. You see that your weight has reduced. I always check my weight after I've done all those. And it always affects it. <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody here. Sometimes you start on the weight. One day we went for jogging. When we're coming, I saw a weight at the junction there. I wanted to stand on it. My heart missed a beat. I said, hey, me. God, I need deliverance. So I go home and I remove my dress and I check. I said, but just now, 
How come I've reduced the weight? Then I put my shoe that I was wearing on it. I was like, the shoe alone was 4.5. Now ask myself, how can I run with a 4.5 weight shoe? And so, oh please, am I am I talking to you? I, I'm not. I, I'm not. And so, if you look at the Bible, the Bible calls something called weight. Weight is different from sin. Okay, Hebrews chapter 12. Seeing then that we are surrounded with a great a crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside the sin and the weight, the very weight and the sin, which easily ensnares us. What is the difference between sin and weight? Sometimes, you know what we do? The devil has made us to think that when we sin, we'll be forgiven. But what about weight? Weight reduces your speed. So, let me tell you, in the spiritual realm, let me give you an example. In the spiritual realm, eh, you can say that you've been born again for 10 years. You've been in bridge for 4 years, 5 years. But in the spiritual realm, when God is marking you, he will mark you the times you came to church and the word of God took you. The time it took you is the day they mark you. The Bible said the entrance of the word brings understanding. It's not hearing it. When you hear, you have not understood. It is when the word enters. It's the entrance of his word that brings understanding. So in the realm of the spirit, whilst you are talking, I've been serving God for 10 years in the spiritual, you have only served 10 minutes. And this register, it is God that marks. Read. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So, if the word I'm speaking, if it doesn't enter you. Am I teaching here? Where me see me, 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 Scriptures, boom. A lot of scriptures are written. But it didn't enter. So the person is still walking in darkness. Because what makes you walk in light is when the thing enters. You know why the person is arguing over that the thing is entering? You will come to church tomorrow. I won't come. You will come. I won't come. No, why? When this person starts arguing, the person is not entering. First, you come to church. Okay. Um, it didn't enter. But now the person hears and is arguing himself. Some say, come. I won't come. Come. I won't come. Come. You know, that is the stage that the word is not entering. And the sign that it has entered is that the person is now in church. It's not every sperm you put in a woman that brings pregnancy. Some people squat it out. Some people also pull it out. Some people also wear condom. When they finish, they just say, Quas, yes, it is the enjoyment. That's why I came to church. Throw it away. So, wash your peace. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I just came to Kadosh. I can't just came to talk to the lady. I just came to have fun. I just came to enjoy myself. Now that I've done everything you have said, ah, I won't keep it. I am going to throw it away. So we are waiting three months, you are not pregnant. Nine months, you are not pregnant. You know why you are not pregnant, but you are pretending to us that we are not powerful. You know very well that you didn't apply it. That is why you are not pregnant. <laughs> hey, I'm here, pal. Get pregnant. I just gave you a hug. You say you are pregnant. 
Some people, the thing is that God never got them impregnated. It is their devil. They are just putting things on God. I've served God. I look at my life. I'm suffering. This pregnancy, the baby doesn't look like God. When you are pregnant, we can hold on to the baby is born. When we look at the baby, how can you, how fair you are? You. Marry another fair lady. And you give birth. Where is Naomi? And the baby looks like Naomi. You see, once the thing is in the belly, you keep quiet. You wonder whether the kids did the work. Whether the hacking did the work. But the day the baby arrives, you look at the product and you say, no, this one, dear. Now, I need DNA. And some of you, you the thing you are blaming God off, God looks at you and says, you mean, since you serve me, this is what I've done to you. Stop that lie. At least, that shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. At this rate, you are bearing false witness against God. I'm preaching. The entrance, the penetration of the word Jesus said, the word is the, the seed. Sometimes we think we have sown seeds. We are watering. Oh, join a department. Oh, do this. We say, oh, we call you. Will you be in church? Let me pray with you. We are watering satanic seed. Your, your method of being in church is a give me mentality. When God wants to make you, you are thinking about give me. I should be married. I should give birth. And most of people won't give me. The thing they request for is like an uneducated illiterate. Listen, an uneducated illiterate who wants to pilot a plane. And God puts security men at the entrance and say, you won't enter the plane. Say, God has given me the plane. But I've seen my name is on it. It is mine. God says, it is yours. But I will never give this thing to you because if I give it to you, this plane is a passenger plane. That's it, 20,000 people. And if I give these 20,000 people to you, you will destroy people's life and people's destiny. So you will never enter the plane. So you are dreaming every day that you are a big man and you are a big woman. But physically, an aunt is even powerful than you. Was let me tell you, the spiritual realm is a different realm than the physical realm. You need to build capacity on this realm. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, before you were born, you were ordained a prophet. So you are before you are. You are in a spiritual realm before you are. There is nothing you have on this earth. A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to you from above. So anything you have on this earth, it was first delivered in the spiritual realm. But if you are not qualified on this earth, you will not have it. If you have it, I can promise you Satan will give it to you. I think I'm not teaching that. Adam, where are you? And she said, he said, God, I realize I'm naked. The word nakedness is I'm vulnerable. Adam, where are you? He said, I, when I saw you coming, I'm naked. Excuse me, how can you meet the glory that will cover you and you are saying you are hiding away? Sin makes you run away from the thing that will help you. Have you seen our surprise at politicians with their mouth? They can hold cutlass and go, go and fight for power. Go and take coronavirus injection. They went. <laughs> I saw one politician. Small injection, no. But this politician will come on the One more phone. We are going to fight. Small injection. That will save you from Quran. You are afraid of injection. 
but you are telling somebody to take cutlass. Anytime you give somebody an instruction, find out if you, you can handle that instruction. 